Ah, Quidditch, Harry Potter's favorite wizarding pastime. As Hagrid would say, a wizard's passion for Quidditch is the equivalent to a muggle's passion for football. This year marks the anniversary of the first publication in the Harry Potter series, and to celebrate, we're showing SolidWorks users how to model the golden snitch, the little ball that Harry loves to hate. So hop on your Nimbus 2000 and let's get started flying through our four-part series. I've started a new part file here, and I'm first going to change the units to metric using this small menu on the bottom right of the window. Let's begin building the main body of the snitch, starting with a simple revolved sphere. On the front plane, I'm just going to sketch a circle dimensioned to about the diameter of a ping pong ball at 40 millimeters. I'll draw in the center line and trim away to make a half circle. Exit the sketch and in the features command manager, let's enter the revolved boss tool and select the center line to revolve around. The snitch is symmetrical across the right plane, so I just want to model half of this for mirroring later. So let's do a 180 degree revolve on the mid plane to model the right half of the body. Now we are going to do something rather unique to add the positive detail to the body. We can use several connected projected sketches to build a sweep path for sweeping the detail. Let's start by sketching on the front plane and I'll sketch a two-handled spline whose points are coincident with this outer silhouette of the sphere. and I'll just adjust and dimension the handles to come to a shape I'm happy with. It's important to set a horizontal relation to this lower handle as we'll do the same for a connecting spline in a later sketch. This will ensure the two splines blend together nicely. I'm happy with this sketch, so let's exit the sketch and navigate to Curves, Projected Curve, and under Projection Type, choose Sketch on Faces to select the face to project the sketch onto. If needed, you can reverse the direction of the projection, but in this case, we look good. Now let's sketch on the top plane to sketch our next spline. The important thing here is to set the relationship between this spline and the first projected sketch. We'll make sure this starting point is coincident with the end of the projected line, and we want this spline to be tangent to the projected line, so I'll set a tangency constraint. Then just adjust the spline's shape by eye, or fine tune its shape and position using dimensions. Now exit the sketch and again we'll navigate to the projected curve tool to project this line upwards onto the body's surface. As you can see, this new projected curve blends nicely with our first projected curve. Now let's do one more projected curve from the right plane before diving into the spline tool. Again, I'm setting up the relationship between this spline and our already projected sketch to make sure the two blend nicely. And I'll also set a horizontal relation to this lower left spline handle to make sure we get a smooth flow from one half of the snitch to the other. And I recommend dimensioning these handles as well. I'll show you in a bit how this comes in handy when making changes to the design.
Now normally we would also need to sketch in our profile shape in preparation for a sweep, but let's look at another option. Select the Swept Boss tool from the Command Manager, and in the Sweep Property Manager you'll see this option for Circular Profile, which allows you to simply designate a diameter for a circular profile, thus avoiding having to add an additional sketch. Keep this in mind when you need simple sweeps like this. So we'll use a 1.8mm diameter, and select our first projected sketch as the sweep path. And I'll just repeat this for the other two sweep paths. Now the shape of this sweep on the back of the part is a bit too gradual for my liking, so I'm going to adjust this lower handle's dimension. Because we dimensioned this earlier, I can simply double click the appropriate sketch in the history tree, double click the dimension I'd like to change, in this case changing this handle dimension from 3 to 1, and click on this little traffic light button to rebuild and make the adjustment. This is one of the reasons I recommend fully dimensioning your sketches, even your splines as it allows you to make quicker adjustments to previously modeled features. Alright, we have a good start to modeling the Golden Snitch. Stay tuned for part 2 of the series, where we'll finish adding the details to the outside of the Snitch's body.